Today on Fast Forward Rewind, we'll be yucking it up with one of Emerson's comedy troupes, Swomo. But before that, Mr. Jason Meyer, Director of Student Activities, will be chatting with us about how you can get involved on campus. She's Maggie Morlath. And he's Christian Mudrick. And you're watching Fast Forward Rewind. Whether it's your first or second day on Emerson's campus, you may have noticed that we don't really have much of a campus. But fret not. If you're missing the fresh air that other college campuses may offer, we still have two wonderful green spaces that we call our front yard. That's right. The common and the garden. But which one is better, you may ask? Clearly, it's the, the common. garden. Wait a minute. What? What? I thought we... Hey, uh, uh, uh. I don't know. The Common has been one of my favorites since my freshman year. I lived in LB, so I could just walk right out of the building, right across the street, and into that beautiful, sprawling piece of grassland right in the middle of Boston. But the garden is so much better. You have the life of the trees and the flowers and the whimsical nature of that giant lake, and it's so much more private and secluded than the Common, and the Common's so grungy. I mean, I guess what's great about the garden is the privacy, but mm -hmm. with the common, I love that it's so open. You can sit on that beautiful hill, look up at the skyline, maybe watch the sunset. But nothing beats watching those tourists on the swan boats that none of us Emerson Emersonians ever ride. <laughs> you know, travelers, tourists, they're always going through the garden. They're so funny to watch. I guess so, but on the common, you've also got the frog pond. There's a playground. You can go ice skating during the winter. Mm, ah. I don't know. I, I still like the garden. You can lay out a picnic and sit underneath the shade of the trees. I think it's so much more beautiful. And all those wild flowers that they bring in and grow during the summer, I honestly, you can't beat it. You really can't. I guess so. And there's that view of Paul Revere with the skyline of Boston behind it. That is a really breathtaking view, I honestly. I do have to say in the garden, there are plenty of interesting sculptures and fountains. Mm, I'm thinking yeah. about one interesting in one in particular. Yeah. But whether you prefer the common or the garden, you'll surely be spending time in both, as they are literally right across the street. No, but don't get it twisted, Maggie. The garden is clearly better, and we all know it. While we resolve this personal conflict, here's Mike Canalupo recapping everything you missed at last night's orientation event about cooking on a budget. On premiere of Young and Hungry, Wednesday, June 25th, only on ABC Family. You just heard, my name is Gabby Moskowitz. Um, I am a professional blogger and author and also the inspiration, as you heard, of uh, Young and Hungry on ABC Family. I have a, a Food Network cooking channel. What, whoever wants to take it, I'll, I'll let it happen. Here, this, this is, is it. Moment, this is this is street meat with my cantaloupe. Well, they workshop this together. What if there was like a play on the word meat? What if it was street meat with two e's? Oh, because I'm meeting. First thing I would like you to know is that um, unlike Gabby Diamond, my TV alter ego, I did not ever sleep with my boss. I want to see who can come up with the better creation using all of these sure. ingredients. We missed one major food group. Where are our vegetables? Oh. Is that, that is there might... maybe like a raisin in here? Yeah, that's uh, like oats, 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 honey. Honey is not in a No. <laughs> I'm gonna lay it down, shake it out a little bit, like Taylor Swift said. Um, you like my, my um, age appropriate reference? ideas as to what you want to do. Yeah, I, want to... I sure do. Oh, wow. Because I have an idea, too. I hope it's not the same one. Well... 
Is, should there be a time limit on this? Or like, are we just going at it? Okay, we'll just do this for a few minutes. Yeah. Yep. Oh. There it is. Is that a taco? This is, yeah, I, I, I was originally going for like a pig in a blanket. Mm. Um, obviously the blanket is a little bit, you know, it's like that blanket that you had your entire life, but you're just afraid to yeah, let go of. Yeah, this is a, um, a charcuterie and cheese plate um, tapa on a uh, oat crostini. What? This is a, um, the, the, well, I didn't think that far ahead. I just, I spent so much time trying to roll these oats that I didn't think of a name. I, I'm eating this. Like, I'm somewhat, except for that bite, enjoying it. Mm, yeah. mm. Our orientation experience. So what was your orientation experience like, Maggie? Orientation is such an interesting time of year. And as I've been watching all the new students come in this week, I've been thinking back about how scary but also exciting that time is where you're just trying to make friends with literally everyone, everyone you, you see yeah, and absolutely. you're just trying to put yourself out there but at the same time be your own person and make a statement in that way yeah it's hard to be an individual at emerson when everyone's <laughs> such a individual you know right but i think that's what makes emerson so, so special exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know orientation was quite an experience meeting all your facebook friends that you met on the facebook group oh Ooh, yes those are some I, fun people i remember the emerson college class of 2016 oh, facebook yes. group pretty pretty vividly yeah lots of interesting characters that absolutely. you meet over the summer then you meet them in, in person. person and they're nothing like the people you met on facebook but some of them are and then you meet uh, friends for life, you know? Friends for life, yeah. <laughs> friends for life. I definitely made some friends for life. But about Facebook. orientation, you really do have to take advantage of all the events that they have that week. Core staff kills it literally for an entire year. They work on it since October. And they plan all of these events for you. Some of them more informative than others, but equally as important as the fun Absolutely. ones, too. Like orientation dance. Let's, let's just sit and talk about orientation dance coming up on Friday, right? In yeah, the, the hotel yeah, across yeah. the street. <laughs> yeah, always a great time, you know, get to really let loose in the last day of orientation and really, you know, go with all your friends, have a great time dancing to some groovy tunes. I think they bring in some DJs on campus, oh, right? Oh yeah, some on campus DJs. Absolutely, and you get to hear great remixes of great songs that you know and love. I, I liked orientation dance. And one event that we're actually going to be checking out ourselves tonight is the welcome show. It's very informative, lots of speeches here to welcome you to Emerson. Core staff speaks, lots of members of faculty speak as well. I believe President Lee Pelton will be there as well. Lee but Pelton. then at the end of the show is the huge orientation leader dance that they work on for a very long time and it's their chance to just kind of let loose, dance around and show off for all the kids that mm -hmm. they've been moving in all day long. It's, it's a great time. But anyway, I don't know about you guys, I kind of let myself go this summer. I mean, I really focused on the three ends, Netflix, Nutella, and napping. But I guess it's time to get back in shape. Yeah, well, here's fitness correspondent Terena Scannell checking out some CrossFit training that'll work off your summer love handles. Hey everyone, I'm Terena Scannell for Fast Forward Rewind, and we're at the Reebok CrossFit Center in Back Bay. And we're getting ready to jump in and see what CrossFit is all about. Lauren, I'm the general manager here at Reebok CrossFit Back Bay. Um, so just want to give you a little information about what CrossFit's all about. Uh, CrossFit is constantly very functional movements performed at high intensity. It's always constantly changing, so your body never adapts to any physical exercise. Uh, we run, we row, and we do everything just basically to get you fit in a fun environment. Typically the classes are one hour in length, sometimes an hour and a half depending on which class you're taking. But you come in, we do a structured warm up, then we do some sort of strength movement, whether it's either gymnastic strength, which would be handstand, push ups, body weight squats, or we do um, a strength portion, which is back squats, front squats, deadlifting, push pressing overhead um, in order to build strength. And then we do what's called a workout of the day or a WOD. And the WOD consists of anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes of um, I'd say pretty high intensity exercise where you're moving through various exercises. So sometimes box jumps, running, rowing, pull-ups. 
we're looking to build a college program here at Reebok CrossFit Back Bay because a lot of college athletes or college people have interest in becoming CrossFit athletes. It's also very fun. It builds community. So we're starting the college program every Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. at our 31 St. James Avenue location. For the month of September, that class is going to be free. So if you have any interest in doing that, you could either just show up at the 31 St. James Avenue location or you can email Lauren at ReebockCrossFitBackBay.com. And then come October, we're going to do it into a little bit more of a five-day-a-week program in various times. But as we build it, we'll add times and days. But for September, it's great. Man, was that a workout. If you're interested in getting involved in the new college program, shoot them an email. I'm Trenna Scannell for Fast Forward Rewind. Well, thank you, Trenna. Now it's time for some hashtag real talk with the rest of our correspondents. Check them out. This semester before I went to the castle, I was lucky enough to room with one of my best friends. We were in a tiny little Piro double, which was kind of poopy, but being with her was perfect because we just meshed very well together. I lived in a six-person suite. Well, I've got some interesting stories about Catherine Collins because she was dating my sweet mate. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we're not going to bring that up here. I actually did random last year. I was in a double in LB, and I had the most amazing roommate. Her name's Caroline Gersick. Um, we took that little quiz, and it turns out our personalities were really compatible. So it doesn't turn out that way for everyone, but it turned out great for me. Living with a roommate is, is fun until they have sex with somebody. I just woke up like at 3 in the morning, and I was in my bed. And he's like, hey man, he was just standing over me, kind of, mostly, like, not a lot of clothes. And he's like, can I read you some of my slam poetry? And I just said yes, because that seemed like the right answer. It's also a lot of fun when you have a roommate and they're having sex and you walk in on them. That's fun. That's, I mean, everybody deserves to have that happen to them at least once. It wouldn't be a college experience if that didn't happen. It is important to know boundaries. Welcome back. Mag Maggie, what are you doing? We're hosting a TV show. Oh, you know, just practicing my dance moves. Oh, well. This probably isn't the best space for you to be doing that in. OK, OK, you're right. Well, here to show us the many performing arts spaces that Emerson has to offer is Justin Cordua. Hi, I'm Justin Cordua. And there's going to come a time this year when you're in your dorm with your dorm mates and you're wondering, what are we gonna do with all this time? Fortunately for you, we have a few venues around the Emerson campus that put on shows. We're gonna check a few of those out today, starting with the Paramount Theater. Follow me, I'll show you where the magic happens. The Emerson College equivalent of Siberia, the Paramount Theater, is located at 559 Washington Street. If you can't find it, just look outside for the flashing marquee. Thanks to our Arts Emerson program, we get discounted tickets to a bunch of plays that come through the theater on tour. You can get discounted tickets to plays like King Lear, Traces, The Magic Flute, and The Old Man and the Old Moon in this fall season. So stop by today and get an Arts Emerson Pass. This is the NPR. It's located at the back of the Piano Row building. It's pretty easy to book and it's a very versatile space. You've got a projector, some basic lighting, pretty curtains, so you can put on almost any event you can dream up here. Also, there's a terrace out this way and that is a nice outdoor space, maybe for a change of pace. I didn't mean to rhyme that, but I'm very happy that it did. This is the cabaret. It's our black box theater located in the basement of the little building. And this is where things like comedy shows and uh, productions by the student-run theater companies on campus will be held. If you can dream it up and it's legal, you can do it here. We're here at 219 Tremont Street, the Cutler Majestic Theater. Opened in 1903 and now owned by Emerson College, the theater seats 1,200 people, and it is beautiful. You've probably already had a look around the theater thanks to your orientation events, but you should also know about the traveling productions who put up their shows in this theater. At the end of the year, the Evies, the largest student-run award show in the nation, uses this theater to put on an extravaganza. You don't want to miss it. These are my parents. 
We've looked at all the places around Emerson, Kansas to be entertained today. And here's hoping that you'll step out of your dorm, go outside and catch a show. Signing off, I'm Justin Cordova. Well, those of you looking for more active and sporty orgs... You've come to the wrong school. But Jamie Sanders is here to fill you in on all your sporty org needs. Thanks, guys. Despite what your mind in bed might tell you, physical activity is an extremely important part of maintaining your health. Here at Emerson, there are a menagerie of ways to keep your blood pumping and justify late night snacking. If you have music in your soul and need to let it out through rhythmic flailing, you may just want to join one of the Emerson Dance Groups. Emerson Dance Company welcomes both accomplished and beginning dancers, offering lessons and performance opportunities to hone both your form and choreography skills. They also offer master classes by well-known choreographers and dancers. Does that sound a little too old school for your funky dance stylings? Well then check out Emerson Urban Dance Theater, who focus more heavily on hip-hop, modern, tap, and other related dance styles. Does the music in your soul sound like a cat being digested? Have two left feet that are perpetually spinning in circles as if your ankle joints are unhinged? You should see a doctor. But medical bills are expensive, so maybe what you and your strange footocopters need are some good old-fashioned sports. By which I mean Quidditch. Emerson has other sports teams, of course, and a cheerleading squad, but Quidditch is the biggest sport here by far. In addition to a well-populated league within the school, the top-tier players travel around the country competing against other teams from other schools. Harry Potter is for real, you guys. If none of those work for you, you can always try what I did in freshman year and hate eat ice cream and sob quietly because crying burns a lot of calories. In fact, I'm going to go do that right now. But first, there's also a gym. See, they offer yoga classes, a well-furnished weight room, and presumably backroom testosterone boosters for when you need that extra leg up on the competition. That's all speculation, of course, because nobody at Emerson has ever actually been to the gym, and in fact, its mere existence is a hotly contested subject that is whispered about in the study halls and rehearsal rooms across campus. Now, anyway, let's go to Nick to see what kind of technical problems he's having. Thanks, Jamie. As always, that was a lot. Now we're here with technology correspondent Nick Rebusell with all you need to know about setting up EC Wireless and praying that it will work for the remainder of the year. Nick? Well, hello, guys. I mean, Hi, we're not, I'm not quite having techie problems, Jamie, <laughs> but, you know, uh, connect EC Wireless is sometimes a struggle. We've got EC Wireless, EC Wireless 5 gigahertz, and the Ethernet in every dorm Absolutely. room. You know, there's at least one jack in every room. So if you don't have a Wi-Fi-enabled computer, you can go and get an Ethernet cable at some place like Staples, uh, the Best Buy at the Landmark Center, there's another Staples, and even the campus bookstore. Great. And I think it's just even great to have an Ethernet cable just in case EC Wireless mm -hmm. is a little oh, wonky. Yeah, sometimes they have, it has its off days, but you know, you yeah. can you can keep Don't want to be writing a research paper and then have just EC Wireless case. fail exactly. on you. Exactly. <laughs> we'll get to that soon. But to register your computer on the, the campus, you go to netreg.emerson.edu awesome. and you insert your ECNet username and password. As you can see, just like a nice little form. You can connect your TiVo and your gaming console if you still have a TiVo or a gaming yeah. console and you don't just I, play all I your don't. games on your computer. You know, Steam, <laughs> that's great. And you only have to do this the one time. Right. Yeah, one time for each device. You can cool. have one wire or two wired devices on campus and unlimited amount of Wi-Fi devices. Nice. Awesome, thank you. So, Emerson provides some great tools to stay productive. Google okay. Apps for Education, you know, you've got Drive, Calendar, sites. Yeah. You can make your own websites and store awesome. it at Emerson, Maps, Google+, Plus, Google Hangouts, things like that. But you know, you've got calendars, you can keep your task lists open. Right. And, you know, keep yourself organized yeah. throughout the year. Do a spreadsheet for maybe keeping your, your budget balanced. Red you cheese, know, milk, yeah, and red cheese, milk, and eggs. Red cheese, milk, and eggs, in case the DH isn't doing it for you. Okay. And I know I was showing Christian earlier, but I've got like a kajillion different Google Drive docs up mm -hmm. right now just on my one browser. Oh, I know, right? I mean, like, it's not just great for presentations for classes, but there's also docs. Yeah. Right. You can just write if, if you do prose, slam poetry, Jamie. Um, <laughs> and the great thing about it is it's not like Open Office or Microsoft right. Office. So it's it's free. free forever. Forever. And you don't have to worry about saving as well. Right. Oh, it saves no for way. you. Automatic saving as long as you don't get disconnected in the from the internet. Yeah. Right. All so. in the cloud. All in the cloud. Right. Another great <laughs> cloud app we have is uh, Wonderlist. Okay. So right here is a list of all the things I had to talk about today and I can check off most of them. Awesome. So uh, it's basically just an app for keeping lists, um, you can collaborate with other people, share lists. So like hmm. you're in an organization, you have a lot of things you need to do. You keep a running list of things. It notifies you if you've set an uh, end time for the event. So awesome. like if you, if you need to finish something at a certain time, you can get push notifications and 
all that fun stuff. So I talked about Google Drive, Wonderlist, <laughs> Google Calendar. This awesome. is fun. Yeah, it's really like this functions fun. especially well for our student students, right. just because we have so many so organizations, so many group projects, yeah. so many yeah. things to keep track of. So many of. orgs. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. Yeah. But I mean, like, there's other apps like this. You can get it for your iPhone, Android, uh, Lyft, things like that awesome. are coming yeah. out too. You've got a lot of really cool stuff. Use my promo code. Yeah, I get <laughs> use 30, promo code. I get thirty dollars. Smart watches in the way of the future. Sweet. All and right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Nick. No problem. Thank you for being here today, and uh, we'll give us on the DL on the interweb. We'll uh, TTYL. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. You okay. sound like my dad. Okay. We'll BRB. SMH. How do you get along with a roommate? <laughs> you just kind of just stay stay out of stuff. If you're having problems, just talk to your roommate about it. I mean, you're living with them, so you kind of got to not keep any secrets. Whatever roommate you have, it can be worse. That's a good thing to remember. And next year, you get to pick them. So that's a good thing to remember, too. If you've got some tension with your roommate, the best thing to do is bring it to them. I mean, talk it out. And if you can't figure that out, talk to an RA because they are there to help you guys get through these sort of conflicts. I just think what's important is you need to talk about it. I mean, I guess I'm a big uh, believer of just talking things out. I think just be straightforward and honest. You really need to understand where these, where your roommates are coming from. I do a lot of passive aggressive things towards my roommates. So if they move my stuff, I just completely hide it all in my room so that they can't touch it. Um, I'm very secretive, so my door is always locked, and I rarely ever let someone in my room. So I guess, I mean, maybe my roommates would have more stories to tell about me than I would about them. I'm probably a really bad roommate. Now we're joined with Isabella Becher and Autumn McComiskey from Emerson's comedy troupe Swomo. Thank you guys so much for joining of us. Of course, sure thing. So uh, first things first, let's talk about the name Swomo. Where did that come from? What does it mean? Yeah, uh, so Swomo is short for Swollen Monkey Showcase. Okay. Nice. And um, the group actually started in the seventies. So awesome. That okay. name is from way there, back way back. Is, okay. Um, group lore with it. Oh, okay. Sweet. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So um, could you talk a little bit about what is the pull to come to Swomo? What's different about Swomo? Yeah, uh, we're awesome. I mean, okay. that's awesome. awesome. Great, great, great. Right. Just rock. Um, okay. Um, also, we're we're really fun. Uh, we are instead of being just an improv troupe, we're an improv and sketch comedy troupe. Awesome. And we also do a in the sketch comedy. It's not like um, small sketches really. It, we do a semester show, so every semester oh, we do a full like. Play. Like play. We write we a play completely. Last one. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were there. It was wonderful. Good. Well, mm -hmm. where can we check you guys out again? Do you have any shows coming up? Yeah, on Friday is actually the comedy showcase. So okay. all the freshmen can come to the comedy showcase. And uh, this is something that gets that gives them a chance to get to know every single group at the school. So will this be one of many groups that'll be at this comedy showcase? But it is so much fun, and we do two performances. So um, one, I believe, is at seven o'clock, and the second okay. is at eight thirty. And where is that? Um, it's going to be in the billboardy. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Right, great. And uh, where can kids find out more about about um, Swomo in general and get involved in Swomo? Well, we're all all we're all, we're all over. Okay, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> oh, great. English. English is, <laughs> yeah, is a good one first start. You know about our group. That's what sets us apart. Okay, Ooh. don't speak any English. Oh, this is a second language. <laughs> immersion. That's the best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna be at the Orc Fair. And we're all over social media. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, follow all us on Twitter, <laughs> Swomo Comedy, and like us on Facebook. We're okay. Swomo. Just, just Swomo, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Just plain and simple. But we'll be at the Org Fair, and there is where you can sign up for a And that's in. September 5th, right? Yeah, September 5th. Yeah. So not okay. this Friday, but the but following the Friday. Friday. Yeah. Right. After then, the orientation dance. After the orientation mm -hmm. dance, the most important part yeah. of the orientation dance. Also, if you want to go to the Boston Comedy Arts Festival. Oh, yeah. We're also yeah, there. Yeah. Too, and yeah, awesome. you were telling me more about the mm -hmm. festivals. Could you explain the, your involvement in festivals throughout the semester? Yeah, well, we, we both yeah. went this summer um, was the Del Close Marathon in New York City. Ooh. Yeah. It's like one of the biggest improv marathons. It's three days long, so like Amy Poehler was there, which <gasps> was so cool. Amy. Yeah, Amy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right, well, uh, kind of a fun question for you guys. Um, in your improv, what characters do you guys kind of gravitate towards normally, <laughs> and like, why do you like doing those characters? Yeah. I love to be an animal and a genie. 
Um, so, could you elaborate on that? A I just, bit. if I don't know what to do, and I think I got to get in there, I usually am a genie. A genie can just show or, up. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Which is not good improv, and I know that, but I have to do it. Yeah, I mean, kind of okay. similarly, things I'm trying to work on, um, I kind of go to a very extreme version of myself, so I become very, very awkward on that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. Um, and I'm trying to be better at not always having a character and just sort of coming on with someone with, like, dialogue to say. Okay, okay. Well, that's good. I think it's always good to have a nice go-to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, and we also kind of just want to ask you guys your experience with SWOMO. Mm -hmm. What has it really done for you? How has it changed your Emerson experience? Yeah. Um, well, personally, we both just joined last year, and I'm a senior. So just for everyone out there watching this, um, you don't have to be a freshman okay. to, to audition. <laughs> you can also be whatever. So I'm I'm a senior, but I uh, it was my first year last year, and it really it it really um it yeah yeah I mean it, it, it really, rounded my experience. It out. gives you a family. It gives you a place on campus okay. to go to whenever you you need help. Right. Well, thank, well, thank you, guys you so, so much, much for being here. Swomo, the hilarious. Check them out. But right now, we'll be featuring a student who not only started the Boston Strong t-shirt campaign, but he dances in several dance companies as a brother of Phi Alpha Tau and is also a returning resident assistant. For a peek into RA life and a testament about how much you can really achieve at this school, here's Chris Dobbins. Hi there, I'm Chris Dobbins. I am a junior marketing communications major with a minor in entrepreneurial studies. I'm an RA here in the little building on the 10th floor, which is the star floor, and I'm really excited to get this year started. So an RA is a resident assistant in a residence hall. There is an RA on every single floor in the residence hall here at Emerson College. So what exactly does an RA do? Well, they're obviously mediators, so if you ever find yourself in a conflict with anybody else on the floor, or just a conflict in general, they'll be there to help. Um, if you just want to have a normal conversation, we're also here for that too. Uh, we're also educators. So what that means is we like to provide you with the information that Emerson College has, uh, whether that be on basic life skills, wellness, things like that. Another cool fact about us is that we like to do floor themes. So my floor theme for this year is Instagram. So other things to remember about resident assistants. We are students too. So we take classes, we're part of organizations. So if you have any questions about those, we can provide them for you. And that's what an RA is here at Emerson College. Hello, welcome back guys. We are now joined with cooking correspondent Ashley Deshaun. Ashley, what did you bring for us today? Well, today we are going to do a sweet treat for everyone. We're making chocolate cream pies. Mm -hmm. Very oh. tiny, but very delicious. They're super okay. easy to make for anyone on a college budget because they don't hurt your wallet and they don't take up a lot of space in your mini fridge. Awesome. Nice. All right, it's great to come home after a long day, have a sweet treat when DH dessert just doesn't cut it. Right. Which is, you know, more times than we would all like to admit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with these individual graham cracker crusts. Okay, awesome. Which you can Here get you them go, in packages. Of six. Six. Wow. Right. So you can make six pies, some for your friends, you know, some for long nights. They can hold you over for a while. Okay. Mm -hmm. And accompanying our little pie crusts, we have snack pack puddings. There you go. Oh. Super cheap. They're going to make up the filling of our pies. They come in so many different flavors, you know, vanilla, strawberry, mm -hmm. whatever, so you can experiment with a different kind of filling. Different pies. Um, just make sure that it is the snack pack if you want something easy. If you want to get a little inventive, we can go buy some instant pudding, mm -hmm. heat it up in a saucepan, and whatever else. So we're going to take our snack packs, open them up. And, and then just harder to open than I remember in kindergarten, yeah. And then we're going to scoop a little <laughs> bit into the center of our pie. Oh, goodness. So, well, while Maggie <laughs> right. struggles, I'm so it'll look scoop. a little I mean, bit not like a this. culinary queen, as I will. <laughs> Me neither. Quick clearly. to profess. <laughs> Be sure to set up maybe a napkin or a tablecloth for a, an obviously messy work center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've got our filling in the middle of our pie here, and kind of spread it out. Yes, you know? definitely. Get it all in there. Yeah, and now we can get a little inventive. We've got some fruit for those of us who want to keep it healthy. I know I love to add fruit into whatever kind of sweet treat that I have, so get the natural sugar and energy Ooh. from fruit. Um, so let's see, I'm going to put some strawberries. Oh, the struggle bus today. <laughs> have some of those bananas. Oh, yeah. of course. Got bananas yeah, here. Bananas here. Oh, yeah, I want um, bananas. Strawberries. I'm going to go for the bananas. Hope you don't mind me using my hands. 
Well, if you're gonna eat it, it'll be delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Get some oh, strawberries. Oh wow, you got a lot of strawberries. You I'm a bit all of, a, of the strawberries. Bit of a hog. She took That's all okay. the strawberries. We can cut some more. I think they're. Yeah, I we've think got we've plenty right over here. Prepared some over here. Yeah. Yeah. Can we like do like a little smiley face? Yeah, that I was. Would be great. That's what I'm doing. That's cute. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> See, I we was gonna add. use this as the nose. Oh, that's good. We can also add some sprinkles, which I am gonna. Pile on here, I Maggie. Know. I know you're a fan of sprinkles, I am, so. especially the rainbow sprinkles. Mm -hmm. So definitely, oh, those are you. The best kind. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Oh. Yeah. All right. Look at Ooh. these are so cute. We got a little face going here. I know. I know. I try. You know what's great about these? So you don't even need a real kitchen. You I know. can literally totally. do, this do this in your in dorm your room. Do this in your dorm Absolutely. room. Absolutely. It's a great little treat. Not just messy at all. Any time at all. You, you, oh, the extra <laughs> creamy ready. Oh, I'm forgetting. Well, that is How exactly can we forget what I'm going the best for. part? Yeah, I'm gonna cover my face in. <laughs> mm, yes, there we go. Hit me with a little bit there. Oh yeah, oh. right in the middle. Mm. That looks good. Yes, you want some? Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna go with some rainbow sprinkles on top too. And once you've got your pies all decorated and beautiful they're going to look a little bit like, like any of these like any of or our something like these mm. once they're ways done to vary it up absolutely, absolutely. once and they're done all piled up you just put them in the freezer or the fridge depending on how quickly you know you want these babies and then they'll be ready to eat in a couple of hours in the fridge nice it's and just so delicious and you can vary it up with color if you get the different puddings too right mm -hmm. awesome mm. awesome well thank you so much this is delicious and, um, but for those of you who don't like chocolate or maybe allergic to chocolate, I have a perfect solution. You don't have to throw shade at the people you hate, just throw pies. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> like, I love dorm life. Like, you can get up and go knock on someone's door, go down three floors and knock on someone else's door. It's like a little jungle gym all confined into one space. Uh, it's awesome to get along with your roommates. If your roommate's your friend, there's nothing better than that. So just sleep over every night. I feel like most people I talk to have not liked their roommates. And it's kind of like a good learning experience because you realize you really can't live with people like unless you, unless, I think you're honestly better off living with people who you aren't friends with. You're out of food and they have some, that's great. So just kind of put yourself in their shoes before asking them a huge favor or sex -iling them for like a whole weekend. I've seen Anthony Monzon naked. You could move if you have tension with your roommate. You could um, prank them, I like a good prank. You can braid your hair. I can't braid my own hair, you know? Like, that's hard. So, all about that. And now it's time to let loose, cut a rug, shake a groove thing, and boogie oogie oogie till you just can't boogie no more. Please. Welcome, Kelly <laughs> Everly. My name's Kelly Everly, and I'm from Niantic, Connecticut. My primary instrument is voice, but I also play guitar and piano, and I started on violin and a little bit of ukulele, and my parents got me a mandolin for Christmas this year, so that's starting. <laughs> Probably just like being in school and learning recorder and that kind of thing, that was always like my favorite part of the day, um, and it kind of progressed, so as I got older, I just really, I found that my favorite part of the day was just kind of like going in my room and I wrote a lot. I wrote like poems and stories and stuff and kind of started just singing them. And then once I picked up guitar, I started putting them all together and that was just always my favorite thing to do and my way to kind of process everything around me. So that's kind of how, how the ball got rolling. Um, so I have always kind of been my own solo thing. I write for myself and I perform by myself. Um, it actually wasn't until recently. Uh, last summer I started playing in like a rock cover band kind of thing, which is totally new for me and it was really fun. Um, and then I also was playing in a band up in Boston called Fate and the Family Band, which is like a bluesy soul funk kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. It was definitely a new experience, um, but I've always been solo, and then I've also been performing in a acapella group at my school called Pitch Slapped, and that's been like a super, super cool thing. <laughs> so being in Boston, where there are so many different colleges, and a lot of them have really, really strong arts pr programs, um, I really, I've just found it very inspiring, and you meet a lot of people just being out in the community, and that's always been something that really helps me write because I don't always just sit down and listen to other people's music and I feel inspired to write or perform. It's usually like, you know, I'll see a, a gallery exhibit at the MFA or 
hear a piece of writing from like a student at Emerson or something like that and it's that really helps me to be inspired to create more things so I think it's really cool that there are opportunities through Pro Arts Connect um, where you know everyone who's studying different things and kind of working on their own journeys in college can kind of put them together and make greater things. Um, I've played a couple really cool places, one of which was just actually at Copley Square. They turned the fountain into like a performing stage for the um, Copley Boston Books Festival. Um, so that was a really cool thing. I love performing outside and just like seeing everyone who comes by. But also a really fun spot is Phoenix Landing in Cambridge. Um, it's kind of like this divey little bar, but you go in and just everyone is like total friends. I went in there with the band I was with last year and we actually blew out our amp and the, the amp started smoking and everyone was like clapping because they're just like, yeah, you rock stars. So it's like a really fun, just kind of goofy place where you can do whatever and just experiment with stuff, which is really cool. So as of right now, I'm actually working on Right, finishing the writing process and then starting to record for an EP so I don't have shows coming up but over the next semester I'm going to be putting together my first solo EP so that's kind of like the goal right now. <laughs> I grew up just really loving music and having music kind of be my comfort when things were not going too hot and when things were going really well I just kind of turned to music and I actually remember really specifically looking at the Berklee College of Music application online and at first being really, really intimidated, seeing who had come out of the school and the things that they were looking for in you know, their application and all that. And then I watched um, uh, Jeff Buckley's version of Hallelujah. And I remember that was the first time I just heard something and it like made me cry. I was sitting at the computer and watching a YouTube video. It's just like weeping for my life. And that was just, I don't know, something just clicked and I was like, you know what, this will be a, just doing music for the rest of my life and just kind of finding whatever works within music will really just make me happy at the end of the day. So that was kind of it from there on. My advice to new Boston freshmen would be to just explore. Um, there is so, so much to do here. And I, I've loved personally exploring all the different like kind of neighborhoods of Boston because it's so, so different. Like, I don't know, there's definitely a big party scene and stuff at no matter what college you're coming to, especially in the city. But it's really great to like go explore the markets in the South End or, you know, go down to the waterfront and just, I don't know, I would say just take time for yourself and just like take an afternoon once a week or something and just walk and explore yeah. somewhere else.
Welcome back. We're joined again with Swomo playing an original game called... Oh, it's called Doo Doo Bucks. Oh, okay. It's an original game we made up. Okay, I great. Think. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So I'm basically just going to start with the rhythm. Doo Doo Bucks. Doo Doo Bucks. Hit it. Doo Doo Bucks. Yeah, Doo Doo Bucks. And we're just going to rap. So uh, shall we start? Doo Doo Bucks. Doo Doo Bucks. I'm standing here in Studio A. And this show is... When this is over, give me a cheer. Banana cake in my mouth. Sometimes I feel like a trout. When I go swimming in the ocean, I like to go with my friend Connor. I 
think it's about a one. Basically. It wasn't a race. It's not a win -win. Oh, it's always a battle. It's it always, always a battle. It's always a battle. You gotta put it all on, on the, the floor. line. This is like Drumline with Nick Cannon. But anyway, thank you so much for watching our show and be sure to check out the Orientation Welcome Show tonight at 8 p.m. in the Cutler Majestic. If for nothing else, come to see us because we'll definitely be crashing. Because there's nothing quite like watching our OL friends put it all on the floor after a long day moving you guys in. And tune in tomorrow, same time, same place. <laughs> <laughs>